this was only a test. Well, it is a good evening, I think. Good evening. Turn it up. Good evening. It worked about an hour ago. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay. okay, we're glad you're here this evening. The first song we're going to sing is Open Mine Eyes, Lord. And the first time through, we're going to do it in Spanish. They're going to do it in Spanish. And the second time through in English. So let's stand and look energetic. The next song we're going to sing is In Moments Like These. Again, we'll sing the first phrase in Spanish and then in English.
guess we're doing one more song. To God be the glory. seated. Welcome. Nice to see you. I'm glad you're here for this first uh, Hispanic Anglo Convocation. Bienvenidos. Nos alegra tenerlos a esta primer, este primer evento de Movimiento Hispano Anglo. We noticed that uh, those of you who speak Spanish and English, uh, Pastor Kessel and I are both on a, a different track. <laughs> no entiendo lo que él está diciendo. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we would just follow the footsteps of our speaker tonight. Because I've heard that um, he speaks Spanglish, and you never know whether the English is going to follow the Spanish, or the Spanish the English, or they both go different directions. El Pastor Rojas habla el idioma del cielo. Y aquellos que no lo... <laughs> ya sabemos, ¿verdad?, que vamos a ir al cielo esta noche. What did he say? <laughs> That's no fair. I only speak one language. <laughs> but anyway, we welcome you. It's so nice to see you. We're glad you're here. This is going to be a wonderful experience tonight. Nos alegra tenerlos aquí esta noche. Va a ser una noche maravillosa, una experiencia especial. Muy bienvenidos sean todos. This is the first of three meetings uh, tonight, tomorrow mornings, uh, at 11 o'clock, 10.45 actually we start, and then tomorrow evening. Esta es la primera reunión de tres, esta noche a las siete, mañana a las nueve, y luego mañana por la noche a las siete de la noche. And uh, as with any meeting like this, we want to give you the opportunity to join with us in support of this convocation by giving of an offering. En una reunión como esta, queremos que ustedes también participen en el sostenimiento de un programa tal al participar eh, con una ofrenda generosa. And before we begin with the offering or the service, we want to pray. Antes so de comenzar a recoger las ofrendas, queremos elevar unas palabras de oración. Let's pray together. Oremos juntos. Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you for your goodness, and we've come to glorify you. We pray that you'll speak through Pastor Rojas, and that we will listen and follow and be blessed. Bless this offering too, that it may increase your work in this valley, we pray in Jesus' name. Te damos gracias, Padre, por el honor de estar aquí esta noche. Encomendamos tu palabra a través del Pastor Rojas. Al ser presentada, cada uno sea bendecida. Y en el momento de la recaudación de estas ofrendas generosas, 
pedimos tu bendición a cada dador, glorifica tu nombre en sus vidas, en el nombre de Jesús lo pedimos todo, amén. Salte tonight, and para la honra y la gloria de nuestro Dios. Dios desea en este tiempo hombres y mujeres transformados por su espíritu jóvenes y niños entregados a la voluntad de Dios ahora di conmigo cámbiame Señor transforma mi vida a tu voluntad y unge mi vida con tu santo espíritu Estás ahí Esperando que mi alma vuelva junto a ti Con la mano siempre extendida hacia mí Y mis ojos dirijo para otro lugar No sé por qué Solamente de ti recibí gracia y perdón Tanto amor y que no logro entender por qué razón Me amas tanto si yo solo busco ir de ti 
me limpia, me usa, me para tu obra. Llena mi colma, me da mi otra vez tu perdón. Quítame toda la costra que impide que sea una hija tuya que solo refleje tu amor. Ven a mi vida, Jesús, quiero ser hoy cristiana. Ven a mi vida, Jesús, si es la tuya, Señor. Aunque parezca que no es mentira, lo sabes. Quiero servirte y honrarte por la eternidad. No puedo más Me he parado mil veces y siempre vuelvo atrás Mis rodillas sangrantes no tienen fuerzas ya Mi deseo es contigo pero no así mi andar Quiero seguir y mis pasos me alejan cada vez más de ti Pero sigo aferrada a lo que dijiste aquí Que tu yugo es ligero y que ponga el mío en ti Cámbiame, limpiame, úsame para tu obra Llena mi culpa, me da mi otra vez su perdón, Señor. Quítame toda la costra que impide que sea una hija tuya que solo refleje tu amor. Ven a mi vida, Jesús, quiero ser hoy cristiana. Jesús, si es la tuya, Señor, aunque parezca que no es mentira, lo sabes, quiero servirte y honrarte por la eternidad. Quiero servirte y honrarte. Por la eternidad. Elder Jose Vicente Rojas is our speaker tonight. How many of you really know who this person is? I should have asked a different question, right? Who do not know Elder Vicente Rojas? He is heading a ministry that supports the Adventist Church under the name of Movementum. And I did ask that they print a big mustache here, but I don't see it. <laughs> Well, we are happy to have him here just after our um, the following musical presentation. Eldo Rojas is going to take over. So let us give him a welcome now. Do you want to clap or do you want to wave your hands or say amen? amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord.
I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy part throughout the universe displayed. Then sing my And forest glades I wonder And hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees When I look down from lofty mountain grande gentle breeze then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great a art how great a art then sings think that God his son not sparing send him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly buried he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great a art, how great. We shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration. My God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings.
Happy Sabbath. Qué bueno estar con ustedes, hermanos. Have you ever sat through Spanglish before? Welcome to Eastern Washington. You know, we've had a, an extraordinary week. Esta semana nos hemos atrevido a ver hispanos juntos con anglosajones adorando al mismo Dios. I mean, just the thought of it. Folks who don't know a lick of Spanish and folks don't, who don't know a lick of English sitting together worshiping in the same place at the same time. We were promised that things would happen in these last days that we're not used to. Uh, a rise of primitive godliness amidst our sophistication. Cuando se nos prometió a través de la hermana White, se nos dijo que habría, que surgiría en los últimos días una, una consagración primitiva, que, que no sería tan sofisticado, un reavivamiento entre nosotros que sería sencillo. Y miren, aquí estamos juntos. I mean, look at us. Come on. This is primitive. I thought only Safeway is where Latinos and Caucasians can be together. <laughs> Think about it. We never worried about coming together at Safeway or at the flea market or, you know. At the general conference session, we even celebrated. But the idea of sitting together in one sanctuary in two languages and one uh, highly improper elocution and pronunciation, but it's okay. Porque estamos hablando en dos idiomas, hermanos. Ya les anda a ellos, ¿verdad que sí? Shh, no digan nada. Don't worry, I'm, I'm working on them too. You see, you don't say something in English and then repeat yourself in Spanish. You, you say something in English and comment on it in Spanish, and then you say something in Spanish and comment on it in English. Because there are people here who understand both languages and it'll drive you crazy to hear the same thing echoed all night long. That's the power of Spanglish. ¿Verdad que así es para los que hablan los dos idiomas? Se dice una cosa en español y se hace el comentario en inglés. Se dice algo en inglés y se comenta en español. So that's why the power of worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness and impossible things can happen. We were up with the great people, the Yakima people last night, the bands, the tribes, worshiping together. Anoche entre los indígenas hermanos de Yakima. Juntos. We had Native Americans present. We had uh, Caucasians present. We had Latinos present. It was pretty awesome. Everybody's looking at each other. And then they said, hey, man. Nomás se miraban todos, hermanos. Había gente asustada. Pastor, son muchos. Y no hablan español. Amén, hermanos. ¿Verdad que sí? Qué lindo estar juntos. Look at this place. It's full. Wow. You guys look great. Mira qué chulo se ven ustedes. It is an honor to be back to the great community of College Place. I'm always at the University Church. And what an honor to be here, to enjoy and fellowship with the people of God. Qué lindo, hermano. Siempre cuando vengo para Walla Walla, ando por allá en la universidad. Pero anda por acá, hermano. La, la universidad me invitó, pero no les hice caso. Ando por acá. And our Blue Mountain family who joins us from where you are, God bless you. And others who are tuning in, Lord bless you. I just ask the Lord one thing, that you walk out of here more blessed than when you walked in. Le pido al Señor solo una cosa, que Dios te bendiga tanto a ti, que cuando salgas de aquí andes más bendecido que cuando entraste, porque Dios va a hacer algo. Dios está haciendo algo y te envuelve a ti. The Lord is up to something. I've been on four continents in the last few months. Something's going on out there. Don't wait to read about it in the review. I'm telling you, something's going on out there. Algo está ocurriendo que nunca he visto. I just got back from South Africa, from Australia. We're not talking about a third world, well, those third world countries. 
they fall into the baptistry all by themselves. <laughs> Try that around here. You know, we should not be telling the Holy Ghost what he can do and what he can't do. Don't ever again say, well, he just doesn't know about central and eastern Washington. It's difficult to baptize around here because folks are already church. We have our set ways of thinking of ours. When the Holy Ghost in a latter rain comes down, he'll decide what's impossible and what's impossible. Porque el Espíritu Santo ya, com ya comienza a lloviznar, hermanos. Ya comienza a lloviznar, Espíritu Santo. Es que ya viene Cristo. Y gente está respondiendo por todos lados, están bautizando. We're going to have a baptism tomorrow. Folks have made decisions this month, this week. Of course, this month too, I'm sure. And the Lord is up to something. Remember, the sister wife said that when the latter rain comes down, there will be people who do not see it nor discern it and will even call it fanaticism. So some people seen do not see and hearing they do not hear i'm fourth generation adventist and i still can't hear amen now i'm not talking about you but just it is possible to still not be able to discern spiritual things no matter how many generations you've been around el Señor está haciendo algo, hermanos, que traspasa más allá de lo que nos hemos imaginado. Ahí hemos comenzado a ver ya milagros, hermanos, donde personas sencillas pueden percibir el, el movimiento del Señor. Antes pensaban que solo los clérigos podían ver y comprender esto, pero no, la persona más sencilla puede comprender la profundidad del Evangelio. Y el Señor está llamando a muchos al arrepentimiento. Muchos están bautizando. Do you say amen to that? Whatever it was. Amen. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm doing the same stuff to them too. <laughs> it's all right. Did you bring your Bibles with you? Trajeron sus Biblias. Trajeron sus Biblias. Pull out your Bibles with me, please. I have 11 Bibles here, three commentaries, plus my Greek and Hebrew Bibles. El Elohim Chag Yisrael, Baruch Hashem Adonai. We will not discuss my grades in Hebrew. <laughs> Suffice to say, I finally learned. Praise God. That's the point, right? So I didn't wear gold cords around my neck. <laughs> I'm just glad I marched. But the Lord is merciful. He'll bless anybody. El poder de Dios, hermanos, es más grande de lo que tú te imaginas, porque Dios está dispuesto a bendecir a cualquier persona. Abren conmigo en sus Biblias a Éxodos capítulo 4. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Éxodos capítulo 4. Versículos 1 al 4. Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. Pull out your swords. We're going into battle tonight. I sense an urgency wherever I go. Folks, Jesus is coming soon. I know you got used to that phrase. Well, I've been saying that for 73 years. Yes, it's even closer now. This is it. I told my kids, get ready. He's coming. Do you believe? All things are possible then to believe. Hermanos, hermanas, tengo buenas nuevas. Fíjense, Jesús viene ya pronto. ¿Tú lo crees o así nada sin ganas? Los dos, tres amenes. Jesús ya viene pronto, hermanos. Ya viene. Las señales se están cumpliendo. ¿Lo encontraron? Éxodos 4, versículo 1 al 4. I've been stalling a little bit, give you time to find it. I hate when they announce a passage. You haven't even grabbed your Bible yet and they start reading it. What's up with that? ¿Qué es eso? Andar anunciando el pasaje y ni dan chance de agarrar la Biblia y lo están leyendo. You found it, right? 
As we read, let us bow our heads that the Lord will lead us and guide us in the study of his word. Inclinemos el rostro para orar, hermanos, para que Dios nos guíe. Let's pray. Father in heaven, lead us, show us, and then bless us. Sir, we would see Jesus. Por favor, oh Dios, guíanos, bendícenos, ilumínanos, por favor. Muéstranos a tu Hijo, Jesús, oh Dios, rogamos en su nombre. We ask in his name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Versículo 1, verse 1. Moses answered the Lord when God called him to be the one to lead his people out of Egypt from bondage into freedom. He says, what if they don't believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, what's that in your hand? It's my staff. I'm 80 years old, you know. How do you think I got up on the ridge here today? And then the Lord said, what? Throw it down. Versículo 1, pero que si no creen, oh Dios, que tú me llamaste para librar a Israel de las manos de los egipcios, pues que si ellos dicen, el Señor no se le apareció, y Dios dijo, ¿qué es eso que tienes en tus manos? Pues es una vara, ya ve que tengo 80 años. Tíramela, dice Dios, throw it down, throw it on the ground. Can you imagine Moses doing that? My mom and dad alternate between Walker and Cain. It depends on how the day is going. You know what I'm saying? If, if it's a bad day, they use their walkers. If it's a really good day, they use their canes. Praise the Lord, I still got my parents. I know I may not have them much longer, but I got me still my mommy and daddy. I know I'm spoiled rotten. I know, I know, but I still have them. I call my mom and dad once a week, how you guys doing? Oh, son, I made it to the restroom. I <laughs> took a bath. I ate breakfast. We're having a wonderful day. That's a good day for my mama. No, mijo, le llamo a mis padres, mis viejitos, con sus andadores, su bastón, dependiendo de cómo les está yendo el día. ¿Cómo están? Les llamo por teléfono. No, mijito, como el pescadito, nada y nada. Llegué al baño, mijo, gracias a Dios, y, y comí, mirando bien peinadita, mijito. Between the, that walker and that cane, that's how they get around. Praise God. Think of Moses, he's 80 years old. Did 40 years as a prince of Egypt in the palace, trained in military skill. And then 40 years as a shepherd, that'll humble anybody. 40 años hizo Moisés como político, como, como líder militar en Egipto, y ahora 40 años como pastor de ovejas, allá tirado en el desierto, aquel lado de Chihuahua. Es cierto, aquel lado, pero más miles de millas para allá, más para allá. And so I said it was on that side of Chihuahua, about 8,000 miles further east uh, from the deserts of Chihuahua where my ancestors are from. No, Chihuahua is not a dog. It's the largest state in Mexico. I know that that's inspiring. You're fighting tears. <laughs> Eighty years old. He can argue that retirement was going well, that he had made his contribution. Ochenta años. Se imaginan cómo se sentía Moisés. ¿Cómo que ahora el Señor me quiere ocupar a mí si yo ya cumplí mi vida? Yo ya, ya, ya. 80 años, pues, ya déjenme. 80 years old, perfect. Can work on his lawn, do the fence, have his own shop, do his stuff. And the Lord says, I got a job for you. You're going to free a nation. You know, we have younger pastors around for that. <laughs> Bunch of kids come along really well out at the college. Why don't we form a team of kids to work with a gifted, you know, 40-something kid pastor from around here. What's his name again? You should call on them. No. There are things that only you can do. 
Podría haber argumentado, Moisés, agarra uno de los mocosos, yo ya estoy ochentón, ya dejan, agarra uno de los mocosos de 50 años, pastores chavalos, que vayan al colegio, agarran a los jóvenes, estudiantes de teología, a uno de ellos. No, hermanos, hay cosas que solo tú puedes hacer. Don't ever forget that. God has gifted you so much that there's stuff that only you can do for Jesus. Hay cosas que solo tú puedes hacer. Por eso te llama a ti. That's why he calls you. Now, when a sermon's going half nice, what, what's our, our custom and culture in our church? You know, I hope she's listening back there because she really needs to hear this. <laughs> you know, isn't that what we do? ¿Verdad que siempre pensamos, hermanos, ojalá que aquel esté escuchando allá atrás? Ese travieso necesita escuchar esto. Olvídense de él. Esto es para ti. Forget about her. This is for you. Quit thinking I hope she's listening. Forget about her. My job tonight is make you uncomfortable. Why me? That's right. Why not you? Christ in you is hope of glory too, isn't it? Why does it always have to be somebody else? Well, I did my time. I, re I didn't retire at 40 years. I retired at 50 years of service. Amen. Thank you. There's more to come. Only difference between retirement and whatever, that you used to get paid more. And you, you, now you own your schedule. Being retired doesn't mean you've stepped away from the Lord. You see, you have decades of experience, of knowledge that can only be acquired by experiencing the power of God. Ustedes que ya tienen más años de edad, tienen experiencia. Tienen décadas de vida, una experiencia que solo se, se recibe por, porque ustedes han vivido. Los jóvenes nunca han experimentado lo que ustedes han experimentado. There is no young person who has seen what you have seen. Now we got some real gifted kids, don't we? You should see your gifts honed by decades of experience. Qué poderosa la mano de Dios. What an honor that we should have this caliber of experience among us. Throw it down. Moses laid his rod down and it became a snake. Pobrecito Moisés. Tírame tu palo. Pero que, tíralo. Se le volvió víbora. Pa' acabarla. Se volvió víbora. Now, you know what kind of snake they have there in that desert? The Egyptian cobra. Very pretty snake. I used to study snakes. I did my research at Loma Linda in rattlesnake venom toxicology. I know that you really care. <laughs> but if you ever got bit, you would want me around. I used to do all the in-servicing for all the clinics up on the desert floor for physician groups on patient management after rattlesnake bite or black widow or brown recluse sting or scorpion sting. Uh, that became my area. The, the hemotoxic properties, the, the neurotoxic properties, the, uh, the, and if it becomes the end of a perfect day, the cardiotoxic properties of said venoms. And, and I did this for, for, as a serious thing. It was not just a silly hobby. Um, and, and I just praise the Lord for that privilege. But in that time, I also learned to perform the surgery called the venom ductectomy, which disconnected the, the venom duct that went from the gland to the fang, rendering the snake harmless so that you wouldn't have a poisonous snake when you were working with the public and teaching them about these snakes. Así que aprendí, hermanos, los venenos de los cascabeles, las víboras tan chulas que tienen por acá en los cerritos. Yo trabajé con esas víboras y entrenaba a los médicos en cómo mantener al paciente que había sufrido la mordida de un cascabel o la picoteada de una, de una viuda negra, una araña, la, la cafecita, la negra, un alacrán. Yo hacía eso, y, pero aprendí la operación de cómo operar estas víboras para que no sean venenosas. Well, one day, an outfit in Hollywood was making movies. You know, they use cobras and rattlesnakes a lot in their movies. And they heard that three of us in the nation can do this surgery. You know, that's not poisonous anymore. After dealing with the ethical issues involved, they brought us an Egyptian cobra, 
who did I think of? Moses. <laughs> Un día en Hollywood, hermanos, querían hacer una película y querían usar una cobra que no, no fuera peligrosa para los actores y nos trajeron para operar una cobra de Egipto. Bien chula la víbora. Now the cobra was not very happy uh, about a surgical procedure. <laughs> and, and you know, they don't come willingly. And you should put a, a poisonous snake under for surgery. And you have to glove up and everything. I mean, you must have a sterile environment. Everyone else, please leave the room. And you glove up. And once you put the snake to sleep, and I will not say how, because we have cameras rolling. <laughs> Somebody might try this at home. You know what I'm saying? Ahora, no voy a decir en público cómo es que le hicimos, porque hay cámaras encendidas, hermanos. I, it, people try stuff, and I don't want to encourage anyone. There's only three of us who do this surgery, and it shall remain as such. I know that I look very stern right now and I've frightened you. Así que no voy a darle los secretos. But anyway, we put that, that cobra under and then one of us held it sideways and then we made the proper incision between the third and fourth scale above the lip. We identified the duct and you come in and you, with a dental hook, you, you, you isolate the duct, you do a tie on this side and a stick tie through here you know, you're, you're doing the usual, and then, and, I'll, and then finally, you cut the duct. And one end goes this way, and the other end goes that way, and then you get some antibiotic cream, and you push it closed, and right between the scales, within two days, it's without even a suture, it heals perfectly. Operamos la víbora, hermano. Da bien aguitada. No quería que la cortáramos. Eh, es cierto? Cuando la víbora despertó. You know how you're in recovery and the patient begins to awaken? You do that with the snake. Wait, it'll wake up in another 15 minutes. And we'd be touching it, it's still asleep. <laughs> you know, have you been in surgery? I have, it's quite embarrassing. I had surgery down in deep, the Adventist Hospital over in deep. And I knew everybody on staff, all the doctors, all the nurses. That was very embarrassing to be wheeled in by people you know. And I'll never forget waking up in recovery. Yeah, he's over there. I wonder if he'll preach in here too. <laughs> Después de mi operación en el hospital, hermanos, un hospital adventista y todos me conocían. Qué vergüenza, hermanos. Que me hayan operado a gente que me conoce. Y cuando desperté allí en la recuperación, que mira, es él, es, a ver si se pone a predicar aquí. You don't preach in a recovery room when you're stoned with everything they put you under with. I mean, that's not rightly dividing the word of truth. Plus the unspeakable pain when you make your first move on an abdominal surgery. I don't think so. Anyway, estaba que me hasta es que me me operaron pues y desperté así la víbora despertó hermano what do you think happened when the cobra woke up he was lying there like this and all of a sudden and he hooded out and it's my kitchen table he woke up ya despertó la cobra the cool thing about cobras and do not try this at home is that they're very slow, especially if they've been under for two hours. <laughs> Pobre cobra andaba borrachita, hermanos. Ya le andaba la vida que odiando que no entiendo, no entiendo que no entiendo nada. I'm trying to do a cobra speaking Spanish. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I should be more Arabic because he's an Egyptian. Anyway, anyway, so fíjense, hermanos. I would go in, his, his hood was like this, looking at me. I go like this, and then tap him from behind. He turned around and, poor guy, what are you guys doing? Now, would you do this without surgery? No. You don't play with a loaded weapon. He had surgery. Am I encouraging anyone to try this at home? No. We, would, we had just performed surgery. 
we put him in his cage to, to recover, and, it, and he recovers in the, just right, room temperature in the dark. And, and they have such powerful hydraulic that when they strike, they can burst the surgery. So you have to calm them down, and we put him in, in, in his cage. And so I remembered Moses. Me acuerdo de Moisés, hermano, la pobre víbora, era una cobra egipcia, an Egyptian cobra. And Moses is told by God, throw it down. But this... This is my staff. Throw it down. You see these markings on this? This is my ranking. I'm first elder. Four nominating committees in a row. Throw it down. Pero aquí está marcada la vara. Yo tengo autoridad aquí. Soy anciano, soy líder. Yo tengo 40 años. This staff has been in my hands for 40 years. Years, it is representative of my personhood, of my leadership. Esta vara representa quién soy yo, mi liderazgo. Todo está representado aquí. Tíramela. Tí, pero que tírala. Throw it down. But it just throw it down. Well, I, I just want you to mira, throw it down. Now, if it was my dad. Don't make me ask you again. <laughs> he'd lay his cane aside and he'd grab a post. If I have to ask you again, young man. Okay, 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 okay. Throw it down. Then it becomes what? <sighs> Se vuelve víbora. First, he makes me let it go. And now he insults me and turns it into a snake. That means it went really bad in committee. <laughs> Primero Dios pide que le entregue la vara y luego me la vuelve víbora. And then, as if it couldn't get any worse, the Lord says, pick it up <laughs> by the tail. Now, those of you who are herpetologists, you know something that most people don't else, else don't know. ¿Verdad que sabemos, hermanos, que nunca se agarra una víbora de la cola? Now, there are people who do this, but they shouldn't. You never pick up a snake by the tail because there's a head at the other end. It doesn't like that kind of stuff. <laughs> and and I've, I've caught thousands of venomous snakes over the years. I haven't done it in almost 20 years now, so don't worry. I will see my grandchildren. But this was a time in my life when I was learning about those things, and we needed two or three hundred specimens at a time to do comparative analysis of, of the 34 subspecies of, 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 of vipers in North America. And, and we made contributions, we published our work, and, and praise the Lord, it improved treatments. And then Dr. Bush comes along in Loma Linda and wipes the slate clean and comes up with even more advanced treatments. I take off my hat in great respect. Praise the Lord. Now, even if you want to, it's hard to die of a rattlesnake bite. It's easier to die by lightning. I hope you know that. It's also easier to win the lottery. Although I don't enc encourage you to try that at home because you just lose. In other words, treatments have improved so well that praise God Almighty, these kinds of research did pay off in the long run. Bendito sea Dios, hermanos, que ahora mucha gente se salva, ya casi nadie muere por una víbora de cascabel. Moisés ve la víbora y Dios le dice, recógela, pick it up. But he doesn't want me to. <laughs> See, he doesn't want to be, pick it up. Put it to... <laughs> Levántala, pero me quiere morder. You know, are you aware that when snakes do that, it's because they're afraid? No, he looked angry. No, that's a permanent expression. They can't change it. Even if they're happy, they look like that. <laughs> Mama's babies were just born. She looks at them. She's not angry. It's just a permanent, they can't change. There are no muscles here to change an expression. I know I'm not persuading you, but at least you're listening about it. Pick it up. La víbora no está enojada, hermana. Es la expresión normal. No, es que se miró bien enojada. No, no, no. Es la única expresión que tiene la pobre víbora. Everybody kills snakes. Everyone kills snakes. Coyotes eat them. 
red-tailed hawks eat them. Deer hunters go out, wait, what's happening to that buck? He's rearing like this. Is he having a seizure? I don't want to shoot a buck that's sick. If I'm going to have venison, I can't have something that's out there seizing in the field. No, when they finally came up, the, the deer had been chopping up a rattlesnake. Even Bambi kills rattlesnakes. So what do you expect this snake to do when he knows he's about to die? Wouldn't you make a fuss? Don't answer that. You, you know, that was a rhetorical think about it question. Hermanos, hermanas, la pobre víbora no es que está enojada, es que todo el mundo la mata. Los venados la matan, las, las aguilías, los, 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 los coyotes, todo el mundo mata víboras. Pobrecita la víbora sabe que va a morir y por eso, that's why. They puff up. I'm bigger, see? And if I'm a rattlesnake, I hear air. Air is escaping from under the French porch. I remember out in Loma Linda, Pastor, you need to come out Sabbath afternoon. I got three rattlers in my garage. Amen. <laughs> Sabbath afternoon activity. <laughs> it's, it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath, to remove this threat from this innocent family's life and bring this stuff into the lab. Pick it up. Pick it up. But... It, it, Pick it up. Levántala. But, uh, levántala. And so he's, okay, all right. <laughs> and he... <laughs> Whoa. God gave it back to him. When you give your best to God... He always gives it back to you. Cuando le das a Dios lo mejor que tú eres, siempre te lo regresa. La víbora se tornó de regreso en su vara. La vara de Moisés se tornó en la vara de Dios. The rod of Moses became the rod of God. It was a symbol of his leadership. It was a symbol of everything, his seniority. It was a symbol of his family lineage. But now, it was a symbol that he believed God. It was a symbol that he'd been called by God. It was a symbol that he was now a leader by unction of the Lord himself. Ahora esa vara, que antes era el símbolo de su liderazgo, de su persona, ahora esa misma vara es el símbolo de que Dios lo llamó, Dios lo envió y le otorgó autoridad. Now, at God's command, he can raise that rod into the air. It had no power. It just represented his commitment to the power of heaven. When he raised it up, ten different plagues fell upon Egypt. And one day when he stood by the Red Sea, God says, what's that in thy hand? My staff, raise it up. And an east wind came in and parted the seas. The rod of Moses became the rod of God. La vara de Moisés se tornó en la vara de Dios y cuando la levantaba hubieron plagas en el mandato del Señor la misma vara no tenía poder y ante el mar rojo cuando Dios le dijo es que es eso en tu mano tu mi vara levántala y un viento del este partió las aguas del mar rojo la vara no tenía poder representaba que este hombre se había entregado al poder de Dios I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't say, I'm too young to do anything for Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't either say, I'm too old, I'm now formally retired, you can ask the Social Security Administration, to, no. God doesn't say, are these hands young, inexperienced, are these hands old? He just asks, do these hands belong to me? Because I can do anything he asks me to do. I can go anywhere he sends me to go. I can say anything he asks me to say. Yo todo lo puedo en Cristo que me fortalece. 
No es si eres joven o si eres anciano, es si eres lleno del Espíritu Santo. Kind of plays with you, doesn't it? I hope it makes you just a little bit uncomfortable. I never, I already did my time. It isn't over. We need you. Stuff is happening out there, and we need calm, mature people who have been there to mentor our, com our young people. We need you. you got an entire college full of these kids. Well, they just frighten us. Amen. That's how powerful they are. Isn't it time that they frighten the Satan? I think these kids are just what God wants. This is it. Timid people don't make it out there. You have to have a hard head. I've talked to mom's pastor. <laughs> What's the matter? It's my daughter. <laughs> she has a hard head. What do you think? Amen. Now, we've seen what the devil can do with her hard head. What happens when her hard head belongs to the power of the Holy Spirit? It's very frightening for the darkness to actually imagine young people in the hands of God. We've been busy looking on the outward appearance, but the Lord all along has been looking on their hearts. Hermanos, esta generación de jóvenes, la que saben todos, chiquillos, los muchachos son inteligentes. Es que no salen de las computadoras, hermano. Los muchachos nacieron con alambres en las orejas. Es cierto, saben más que nosotros. No le tengan miedo a los jóvenes. Los jóvenes llenos del Espíritu Santo. Cabezones por Cristo. Hey, no, le, no, no le impidan a sus hijos ser cabezones Con que sean cabezones por el Señor hermanos Es tiempo que el diablo se asuste It's time church It has been foretold That an army of youth would rise And I don't read anywhere in the prophecy That it's our job to criticize Well there they come Look at that hair Listen to that music Here God promises the army But I'm going to dismantle it Because of what they look like God did not call you and I to come to, to destroy them. God called you and I to take them under our wings. Mentor these hard-headed kids. You can do it. I'm not able to get out of the house. All right, tell me where you live. We'll send, to the, we'll send those kids to your house. I was a nurse for 47 years. These nursing students can use the gift of your experience. I had a patient in 1963. I didn't think I'd ever survive that case. See, our kids need to hear that, don't they? Patient ended up getting baptized. And I thought it was the one patient that would never love God. See, we need to hear those kinds of things from you. Even though it happened way... You know, Alan White and I used to work the floors together, personally. I helped treat Elder James White when he got sick the first time there in Battle Creek. You know... Whenever I sit with, with folks who have lived twice as long as I have, you know, my native roots, you treat your elders with reverence. ¿Verdad que en la comunidad hispana tenemos que respetar a nuestros ancianos? Porque ellos han vivido, hermanos. A los adultos, ancianitos, a, los, a nuestro viejito, a nuestros abuelitos, hay que tratarlos con gran reverencia porque se la merecen. When you have lived long, that alone deserves every respect. And brothers and sisters, the time has come. Tomorrow I'm going to speak about a couple of these prophecies that involve young people and old people, excuse me, younger people, because they hate when we call them young people, and older people, because you hate when we call you old. I, I am now officially old, you know that. Yo ya estoy viejo, hermanos. I began preaching when I was 16, just a few years ago. <laughs> Comencé a predicar cuando tenía 16 años, hace poquitito, hermanos. Apenas antier andaba predicando yo por primera vez. And I've always said, we the young people, hey, you guys, we the young people. It's been foretold that we the young people, I'd pull out Alan White, we the young people forever and ever. Amen. And I was the youth director of this denomination. We, the young people. It was quite controversial. Why do we have such a young youth director? Well, doesn't it make sense that a young person lead young people? 
Does it always have to be a grandpa who oversees teenage work? Oh, we never thought of that. So there I was, a little kid in the general conference with everybody old enough to be my grandparent, not my parent. They were quite frightened. He has no experience. Amen. We, the young people. And in the hallways, they would call me young man. How are you, young man? I'm well, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Good young man. I was young man. <sighs> Me decían joven allá en la conferencia general. ¿Cómo estás joven? Ahora tú que vas comenzando. You know, I was starting my ministry for the first 30 years. Now that you're starting out in ministry. Okay, I was already into it 25 years. As you start out in ministry, I've been starting for a long time. One day, I'm going to be fully in the ministry. Siempre me decían, tú que vas comenzando tu ministerio, hijo. Así me decían, tú que ahora vas comenzando. Ya llevaba casi 30 años de pastor. Mira, hijo, tú que vas comenzando. Well, one day, after a big youth congress, I said, we the young people. Again, which I was so used to doing. And a delegation of kids was waiting on me after the program. Pastor, we need to see you, please. You could always tell when there's a somber expression on the face of a young person. We need to talk. Pastor, tenemos que hablar. Me esperaba una delegación de chiquillos. Pastor, this we, the young people thing, you're older than our dad. <laughs> you're older than our uncle, and he's old. <laughs> so say after us, I, I. <laughs> Pastor, eso de que, que nosotros la, los jóvenes, usted está más viejo que mi papá. Hasta mi tío que está viejo, usted está más viejo que él. Repita, repeat after me. Repita, uh, I, yo, am, soy, old, viejo. I'm old. So you need to know that young people have officially shoved me off the edge of the cliff. I am now a bona fide adult in the Seventh-day Adventist church. So when I talk about old people, I'm talking about me too. That means old people is the language of young, the young. You know that. They, either you're like us or you're one of the old people, man, for sure. <laughs> you know, so I'm now, I know you're looking at me. Look at this kid with a low self-esteem. We need to speak with him after the program. It, I'm just telling you the sociology of it all. What's that in your hand? Lay it down before the Lord. Hermanos, hermanas, ¿qué es eso lo que tienes en tu mano? Entrégaselo al Señor. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying to us tonight, who are you? Well, I'm this, amen. Lay it down. Give it to me. But it's just that, you know, I've made my contributions. I, I was certified. I did the best I could. I, I, was, I, I, I was the medical director for decades. I, I did my part. Lay it down. And then you lay it down. Pick it up. What? Yeah, there are teams at Loma Linda that need your help. No! Pick it up. Have you ever had kids come and ask for your help? Nunca les ha pasado que jóvenes piden su ayuda? There's a young man on Facebook. He came to me in a back-end message. You know, I have about 30,000 uh, likes. I think my enemies are there too. I don't think everybody likes me. <laughs> my hate mail consists of, you need to shave. I had no idea how offensive my mustache could be. Los que más me desprecian me dicen, tú tienes que rasurar, afeítate ese bigote tan horrible. Amen. The other hate mail I get is, you are far too happy. <laughs> Calm down. I got, I'm telling you the honest truth. And they break my heart. You need to be more sober. So you ask, you guys pray for me that God will give me victory over joy because <laughs> I'm in trouble for being happy. Now, isn't it the foolishness of preaching that Paul called it, that God takes a broken human being and does something divine anyway? 
Now, some of you are more soft-spoken, so you're a soft-spoken speaker. Some of us are a little bit louder. Mama didn't know what to do, and she finally gave up, and the Lord took that too. Don't expect everyone to be one personality. God can bless anyone as long as you lay it down. El Señor no está preguntando si eres alegre o seriecito, si traes bigote o no bigote, hermana, no te preocupes, no, eh, hermano, eh, si traes bigote grande o no, eh, 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 entrégamelo, entrégamelo y te lo regresaré. Put it down, give it to me, and I'll give it back. And this life that has been yours, will become the life in the hand of God. Y esta vida que ha sido tuya se volverá una vida en las manos de Jehová. The time has come, church. This world is not my home. What about you? Now, you guys are spoiled, rotten. You have a gorgeous town, the best weather. It gets cloudy and it still doesn't rain. It just smiles at us. But you go Seattle way, they see the sun three times a year. You, you see rain three times a year. It rained today. No. Mm-hmm. Ask the dog. It's gorgeous out here. Agriculture, values, clean air to breathe. The closer you get to the Columbia, I see a fish glowing in the dark. <laughs> Was there a, a nuclear leak anywhere nearby? I've never seen a fish that's well lit from the inside. Hasta que llegamos al río Columbia es cuando vemos la contaminación, porque acá está chulo. Even your dogs are happy. Have you noticed that? They all walk with a swagger. I, saw, I was looking at them as we drove in. Dogs are like, oh, oh, oh. Los perros contentos, hermano. See, you are so blessed. You forget what you have. I've been stuck in Washington, D.C. for 21 years. Now look at me. Do you think Washington, D.C. when you see me? Don't answer that question. <laughs> Tengo 21 años tirada allá en Washington, hermanos. The other Washington. We've had four and a half months of winter. It snowed again this last week. When, I mean, it's almost as cold as the politics, but nothing will get colder than that. I, <laughs> almost, but not quite. We've had several nights of 30 below zero. And our dogs, <laughs> are you a Republican or a Democrat? <laughs> Around here, your dogs are joyful, chasing the gopher. Wait, wait, his, wait, don't, shh, don't scare him. His head's going to, he keeps coming out like this to grab some grass. Don't tell the cat because he always takes him away from me. See, your dog, I'm trying to tell you something. I would love to live out here. Treasure what you have and lay it down for Jesus that you can go out on a walk and not worry so much about crying as I have to think about when I go on a walk. Okay, everybody look both ways. Dad, there's no one out here. That's the problem. <laughs> See those bushes over there? It's getting dark. But, Dad, it's cold. They wear jackets, too. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm in the deep city. You get to be here. Lay it down. Give it to him. And he will give it back to you. Then this great place shall become the place of God. And when you do ministry, people will never again be the same. Cuando ustedes salen aquí en Walla Walla, hermanos, qué chulada de pueblillo traen ustedes. Otro vienen viajando de lejos también de otras chuladas. Está la manzana, pues. Uva. No, hasta vi lechuga. Otro ya metieron papas. I used to pick raspberries and strawberries to pay tuition. What do you think I feel like looking at all these grapes? Apples. Immigration come, we'd all run for our lives. <laughs> Born and raised, red-blooded American, and I'd run for my life too. 
Why are you running? Because they tell me I look like a Mexican. <laughs> now, I don't know what I'm supposed to look like. Llegaba la migra, hermanos, cuando trabajaba yo en la labor y corríamos todos. Y yo nacido y criado acá, hermanos. But you know what? I still live there. I still live there. When you live in paradise, you do whatever is necessary to live in paradise, don't you? So you have it all. I invite you in the name of Christ that you should lay it down for him and he will give it back. And here's many of you thought your journey was over. You're just going to coast on through till it's done. No, there are some kids that need you so badly and you know you can mentor them. It's not that you're just going to teach them. It's just that ha them hanging around you is going to teach them some values, won't it? Isn't that what we complain about? Our kids have lost values. Imagine, they see that flag on your front porch. What's, the, what's with the flag? I'm a veteran. You watch yourself. What's a veteran? I wore the nation's uniform, World War II, young man. You're free enough to buy a bag of groceries at any hour of the day or night because me and my buddies bled on some battlefields for you. You, you learn to respect. What's that, what's that kid learning right now? Values. Coupled with his faith, what's going to happen? That's a powerful warrior for Christ, isn't it? If you love God and country, you're a formidable soldier on the battlefield. If you love God in a heavenly country, you'll be formidable against Satan, against the darkness of principalities and rulers of this earth. Es tiempo, hermanos, que tomemos a la juventud bajo las alas y en vez de andarlos criticando, tomémoslos, hermanos, adiestremos a los muchachos, enseñémosles lo que Dios nos ha enseñado. Vivan una vida ante ellos y la juventud va a resplandecer. God promised us an army of youth. And they're in town. They're in town. But I know what comes easier. You know, the college has just completely let go of everything. Amen. You know, criticism is what comes easiest. Don't criticize your own school. Pray for them. Th those are our kids in there. My little girl, she's not going to march off of this campus. My daughter's going to graduate in one month. I don't want anyone criticizing the Adventist college she attends. Well, you know, they're so liberal. You watch yourself. My kid is there, and she loves the Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Any questions? Oh, you want to step outside? <laughs> I'll pray with you. A mí no me vayan a criticar las escuelas. Ahí están nuestros hijos. Our schools are not perfect. But Cognitive Genesis has proven, and I was on that committee, when we developed those instruments and carried out the research, Cognitive Genesis has proven our schools are the top in the nation. In comparative analysis, we're not bragging. It's just the truth. And yes, the devil tries to get on campus too. But our kids have more options for Jesus Christ than anywhere else. Let's pray for our institutions, brothers and sisters. See, you guys are so spoiled. Ay, ustedes chipileados, hasta una universidad adventista tienen aquí. Con academia. You know, last time I came, I preached at the academy gym. That's mean, huh? I drive past the church to go to the university church, or I drive past this church to go to the gym. It was time I stopped here. I'm sorry it took so long. But look at the audience. Miren nomás quienes están aquí. La vez pasada, ¿se acuerdan hispanos? Estuvimos juntos acá en el gimnasio. Ya les andaba porque prediqué largo. I'm just telling them, you, you remember when we were at the gym together for that Hispanic event and I preached overtime. You know you were all scared. <laughs> Entonces, eh, o oh, estoy en la universidad, por fin me tocó parar aquí. Think of it. Put yourself in my position. I finally have the joy and honor of speaking here and I see a Latino, Caucasian, everybody audience. You guys figured out how to get me to come back, huh? Voy llegando por primera vez, hermanos. Y hay gente aquí que solo habla español, hay gente aquí que solo habla inglés. This is a miracle. Have you heard of the gift of tongues? You're experiencing it. Is this not a Mexican? 
How is it that we hear him in our tongue? No será este mexicano, ¿cómo es que lo estamos oyendo en inglés? But let me, you, you want to hear another one from out there? I was preaching at a church in the city of Beep, and the door's right up against the sidewalk out in the city. So the, you walk past the door of the church, and that's the foyer and the sanctuary. It's only about 15 feet from the street to the entrance of the sanctuary. Estaba en la ciudad de Beep, hermano, una ciudad acá, Beep, para este lado. You notice that Beep sounds the same in any language. Entonces, hermanos, see, I get too happy. I apologize. I'm happy. The joy of the Lord really is my strength. You know, I've suffered so much. My brother was murdered while begging for his life on his knees. The leading cause of death in my family is homicide. You know, let me be joyful. Let me find joy in this world that has done so much harm to my family. You see what I'm saying? I just thought I'd pause because I know some of you might have been thinking it. Okay, anyway. Hermanos, estaba yo predicando en esa ciudad y la puerta estaba abierta y un señor pasó así y luego se detuvo con lo que escuchó y entró al servicio. This man was walking by the open door of the church as I was speaking up and he goes like this and he comes back and he walked in. He sat down and after the service he came to greet me. I didn't have a clue what he was saying. He's in, there happened to be someone there, he was speaking Russian. And he says, the only reason I walked in is that I heard perfect Mother Russian. No, I, I don't want you to react, just think about it. Throw it down, then he gives it back. Okay, I'm, all right. He heard Russian, I'm speaking Spanglish, ¿Cómo estuvo? El señor que entró, hermanos, quiso venir a saludarme, no le entendí nada, era un ruso. Él dijo, la única razón que yo entré al templo es que te escuché hablando el perfecto ruso de allá de mi, de mi madre patria. ¡Ruso! That's Spanish for Russian. <laughs> Now let's all try it together. ¡Ruso! That's Russian. Russians here? Lord bless you. Amen. I'm showing respect. Spanish and English pronunciation of Russian. Amen. I know you're excited. You're learning all kinds of things that you probably wonder if they are necessary, but he heard Russian. Give it to me. And what does God do? He gives it back. Then if you're faithful to do what he calls you to do, he will go before you. Even the sea will open up When necessary. Cuando Dios dice entrégamelo y se lo entregas, Él te lo va a regresar. Y si aún es necesario, te abre el mar. Are you ready to lay it down? Because we're going to tighten the bolts tomorrow. Can you back, come back tomorrow? Eh, ma van a regresar mañana. De una vez cierren la iglesia, vénganse. ¿no? El, y tráiganse al pastor también. Si quieren, tengan sus cosas sabáticas, pero vénganse corriendo. Y por favor, guárdenme un asiento. Nunca me toca sentarme a escuchar el tema. I, I, all I ask is that you save me a seat. You know, I never get to hear these messages. I want to hear just one. So if you can just save me a seat up here somewhere. I, I'm telling you, that something's going on, brothers and sisters. The Lord is making it clear. Something's going on out there. And I want to tell you more about it tomorrow. I want to testify tomorrow. And I didn't come here just to say nice things. We need to mobilize. We began as a movement, and prophecy is clear. This work is going to end as a final movement. Follow? Comenzó nuestra iglesia adventista el séptimo día como un movimiento, hermanos, y se nos dice a través de la profecía que vamos a terminar siendo un último movimiento. So I'm going to sing a song and as I sing this song if you want to lay it down if you want to lay it down so that the Lord can give it back to you some of you say I'm too young I'm eight years old 
Others of you saying, I'm at the other end of the spectrum. If we can make room, if, if we notice somebody who needs a place to sit because they found their way down here, make sure that those who are, are, able to, are needing to sit are able to sit. Just notice and look around. I, I want to challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're needing people for a final movement. A movement that has been prophesied. A movement that's going to happen whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not. A movement that's already begun out there. Something's going on. And I want in. I, for one, am not going to be a spectator and watch this. This is not sports. Now, if you're like me, we have lived our entire life for this day, haven't we? To see a final movement of the Holy Ghost. Isn't it time? Hermanos, hermanas, yo voy a cantar un himno. Y si tú quieres decirle al Señor, yo quiero unirme al movimiento. Yo sí quiero dejar caer mi vara para que el Señor me bendiga y me la regrese. Uh, 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 ven para adelante. Y si hay alguien que necesita para sentarse, aquí váyanse vigilando. Si alguien necesita un asiento para sentarse, alguien con bastón, alguien que sufre, si está parado mucho tiempo, denle chancita a la persona que se siente. Pero mientras estoy cantando, ven pasando. Come forward and say amen. I'm going to lay it down. And the Lord will give it back to me and I'll use it for his glory. Are you ready? I'm not appealing to your emotions. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Isaiah 1.18. Though your sins be as scarlet. Check this out. They're going to be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson. They're going to be as wool. And those of you who are watching us on your TV sets or over the internet, you make your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. This is a movement. If this were the United States Navy... Or the Coast Guard, we'd hear things like all hands on deck. Any Navy veterans down here? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Army, Marines, Air Force, veterans, thank you for your service. God bless you. Anybody serve in Vietnam? God bless you. Welcome home, sir. Welcome home. Hay veteranos soldados aquí esta noche, aunque haya servido en otra patria. Hay veteranos aquí, fuerzas armadas de tu país. Dios te bendiga. Some of us have our kids out there wearing a uniform, don't we? Every plane I fly in is full of soldiers right now. Are you aware of that? Bunch of kids. You know what the average age of our armed forces are in the United States? Nineteen. So I see this girl getting on board with her fatigues, her big old giant duffel bag. The, the, the bag is as big as she is. And this kid is going onto the plane. Go, hey, sweetheart, are you shipping out? I'm shipping out, sir, Afghanistan, sir. Sweetheart, I, I'm, a, I'm a civilian. You don't have to call me sir. Yes, sir, you're a civilian, sir. How old are you? I'm 19 and a half, sir. That's when the half matters. Her birthday was yesterday, it's already a half. But once you hit 30, remember? I'm not quite 30 yet. <laughs> Here you were turning 64. It is now the anniversary of my 30th birthday. And you're very cautious about who knows what age, or even your auntie cannot know how old you are because she forgot and you're not gonna help her remember. This child says, I'm 19 and a half, sir. Una muchachita, 19 años, subiéndose a un avión, soldado americano, yendo a la guerra. Someone's little girl is shipping off to war. And we've lost a lot of those young ladies in these terrible wars of the last 14 years. We have kids already laying down their lives. This guitar was made in dedication to 18-year-old Sammy Gurule, giving his life for the Lord in ministry in New Mexico, and he died in a car wreck while serving the Lord. And then up here, the, the headstock of the guitar, it mem memorializes uh, Jonandi Haupt, an 18-year-old young lady from South Africa with the Abundant Life team, going from town to town, city to city, doing ministry, crusades, concerts, and community service, and they had a horrible accident on the highway, and she passed away. Two 18-year-old kids on opposite ends of the planet who died while serving. A bunch of us just argue. Others are busy doing ministry. It is time we take the, the hint 
and get involved. Así que mientras yo estoy cantando mis apreciados, dos jovencitos, Sammy Gurule y Jonandi Hop, de 18 años, de Nuevo México, de Sudáfrica, ambos murieron mientras servían al Señor en ministerio. Y si ellos dieron su vida, ¿por qué nosotros no entregamos nuestro servicio al Señor? People have already given their lives in service for the Lord, haven't they? How about us? How about giving it to the Lord? And he'll give it back. So as I sing this song, come on up that we might pray together. A bit more volume on the guitar, please. My guitar sings a duet with me. It doesn't sing behind me. It sings next to me. That was for the benefit of the sound people. Mientras canto este himno, quiero que tú pases. As I sing this song, come forward. Closer. Venganse. Apretémonos un poco. Come closer. Come in. 
Come in closer. Vengan pasando, por favor. I have good news. Jesus is coming soon. Tomorrow I'm going to share a little bit about what's going on out there. Jesús ya viene pronto, hermano. He's putting together his final movement. Enough talk. It's time to act. Ya que tanto alegate, hermanos, hay que ponernos a trabajar. Whether your position is faith alone or faith without works is dead or faith is works or let the others see your good works. You know what? Let's get out there and work. Debate while we're working. Souls are dying around us. And you know what breaks my heart? They're our own family. That is not acceptable. I don't want to lose any more cousins to the world. We choose Jesus. Ahora sí, hermanos, se está formando el ejército. Estamos perdiendo muchas almas. Y muchos de ellos son nuestros familiares. Ya, ¿verdad que sí? Basta. Tiempo de actuar. Ya dejemos de alegar y de hablar. Podemos platicar mientras trabajamos. Go ahead and discuss issues, but make sure you're working while you're discussing it. Does that make sense, church? Notice I'm not asking you to do something that I myself ain't doing. We're in this together. Throw it down. And if it turns into a snake, pick it up. I know. I, I wouldn't mind picking up a snake myself, but. Ya entregaselo a Cristo. Ya entregaselo a Cristo. El tiempo se ha venido. This is it. Are you in? Grab the hand of the person that's nearby. Agarren la mano de la persona que les quede cerca. If you see a person who with a, a cane or a walker who would really benefit from being able to sit down, kind of assist them that they may find their place if they are needing that, okay? So that no one suffers in this moment. I want everyone to be a part of this prayer. Si ven a una ancianita, alguien que batalla con su bastón, ayúdenle a que esté cómodo. Si se puede sentar o desea estar parado, ayúdenle a sostenerle para que nadie sufra durante esta oración. Are you ready? I want to pray with you. Look at us. I, I, I see Latinos and Caucasians in the same sanctuary, worshiping the Lord, holding hands together. And no one's asking, I hope they have papers. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You see how the Lord does miracles in these last days? What do you think Latinos feel like? Oh, no. They're going to judge me. And what are you thinking? Oh, no, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> But we're together. This is what heaven's going to look like. We're together. Caucasian, Hispanic, Asian, Native American. Oh, that's right. Jesus, we look just like him. You know, he has the most beautiful blue, green, brown, black eyes you've ever seen. <laughs> he has manes of blonde, black, red, brown hair that falls with light so bright it looks white on his shoulders. And, and of course, his mustache is bigger than mine forever and ever. Amen. Can you see why I'm rejoicing? Do you mind? This is not a lack of reverence to recognize that the Holy Ghost is moving freely among us, that we can let down our walls that keep us separate, and we're together. You coming back tomorrow? Okay. You're still holding the hand? Then let's pray. Vamos a orar, hermanos, porque esto es un milagro. Dios ha unido al anglosajón y al hispano, al asiático, al nativo americano. Ahora vamos a orar. Father in heaven, you're something else, O oh Lord. You have brought your people together, every kindred, nation, tongue, and people, into one gorgeous sanctuary to worship you in the beauty of holiness on your Sabbath, that we might see the fulfillment of prophecy, one people doing one work, not a bunch of multiple different works going on across the valley. It is time, O oh Lord, we lay down our opinions. We lay down our attitudes. We lay down everything that we believed and cherished up till now, like Moses did. You take it. Just like the rod of Moses became the rod of God, 
We want our attitudes and views and convictions to become your views and convictions and attitudes. Señor, ahora te entregamos nuestras vidas, te entregamos nuestras opiniones, te entregamos quienes somos, oh Dios. Recíbelo. Así como Moisés, su vara se volvió tu vara, que nuestra vida se vuelva tu vida, oh Dios. Bendícenos, Señor, por favor, sálvanos. Save us, oh Lord. We got kids out there who don't know who you are anymore. And that's not going to cut it. Save our kids. Save our nieces and nephews. Save our grandkids, oh Lord. The devil cannot have them. They are your army, and he's just not going to walk away. You've already declared victory. We claim victory in Jesus. We lay them down. Please give them back to us. Te entregamos nuestros hijos, nuestros nietos, nuestros sobrinos, Señor. Nuestra familia. Te los ponemos a tus pies. Como Moisés entregó su vara, te los entregamos a ti. Ahora regrésanos, por favor, Señor, y bendito. Salva a nuestros hijos, oh Dios. So now, Lord, bring us back tomorrow for part two. Shake us up. Take us out of our comfort zone and call us, Lord, in a latter-day reign of the Holy Spirit. It is time to act. And we have the people necessary Younger and older and younger and children and retiree and man and woman and everybody of all kindred, nation, tongue and people. Here we are being vulnerable. Do your stuff. May we be witness. Así que ahora, Señor, despídenos, por favor, pero no te vayas a quedar aquí. Acompáñanos a la casa y bendice nuestras familias. Please don't stay here. Go home with us. Don't be a guest of honor. Live with us. Be a member of the family. We pray in the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. Okay, look at me just one more time. Mirenme solo una vez más. Just one, I'm sorry, just look. Go and tell someone what you have seen. Ve y cuéntale a otro lo que has visto. Go in peace.